Welcome, this is Terry Ewell. I interpret the confuocal marking with fire to indicate that the dotted eighth notes should be separated. This gives the performance more zeal and passion. It then contrasts nicely with the tranquilo section that is calmer and slurred. In the last two lines, leggeramente means lightly. Don't accent the tenuto quarter notes. This is more an indication to hold them the full value rather than distress the notes. Throughout the movement, I make use of the alternate G flat 3 fingering when approached by or going to B flat 3. I also make use of the left hand only D flat 4 and the E flat 3 fingerings. These are not marked in the music because you should be familiar with these fingerings now and when to use them. I also add the C-sharp resonance key to stabilize and help the intonation with B-flat 3 at the fine. I use the alternate fingering for G-flat 4 in line 2, measure 4. This fingering works much better for the slur from B-flat 4. This is the same fingering I use in the second solo passage in the Rite of Spring. In my videos on the Rite of Spring, BDP numbers 92 to 94, I discuss this passage and other aspects for practicing the work. Now let's work on phrasing. In line 10, I challenge you to practice phrasing the first four measures in three different ways. This will help you to better understand the subtle roles of dynamics and rubato with phrase shapes. First shape the four measures in separate one measure phrases. Do this both on a monotone and as written. The arrows point to the musical goals. So these phrases start with climaxes and are shaped away from them. That phrasing really chops up the music. This is not a good musical choice. Now, shape the measures with the goal on the downbeat of the third measure. First I will do this on a monotone and then is written. The arrow to the right of the curved line indicates motion toward the goal. The arrow to the left of the curved line is motion away from the goal. Thus the downbeat of measure three is the climax. <laughs> Finally, shape the measures with the goal on the downbeat of the fourth measure. Again, I will practice it with a monotone and then as written. <laughs> Which of the last two phrasings did you like the most? Why? In the next line, Weisenborn indicates with dynamics a goal on the downbeat of the third measure. However, since the goal of the next four measures in line 10 is on the fourth measure downbeat, you could prepare the listener for that by phrasing to the fourth measure in line 10. Then in the eleventh line, your goals could be placed on the downbeat of the third measure of each pair. Both solutions for line 10, that is, goals on the downbeat of the third or fourth measures, 
are musically good. It will be your decision as a musician to choose what you want to express here. However, be prepared to defend your choices. Don't just hope that on the spur of the moment you come up with a good phrasing. Think through your choices and be ready with a reply if someone asks you, why did you phrase like that? What is the most recited verse in the entire Bible? If you said John 3.16, you might be partially correct. That is perhaps the most translated verse in all of human history. It appears in more languages than any other portion of literature. However, my question was about which verse is the most recited. For centuries, Jews and even the first Christians recited the Shema Yisrael, translated as Hear, O Israel. A portion of this is found in Deuteronomy 6, 4, through 5. For centuries, believers have recited these words at least two times a day. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Jesus was asked by a legal authority, what is the greatest commandment of all? He answered with a portion of the Shema Yisrael, but made one change. He replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. I find the addition of the portion, with all your mind, very interesting. There's no question that Jesus was a brilliant man. But the addition of this portion is not just for the smartest people. Jesus was indicating that God desires devotion and love from every portion of our being. He wants all of you, your emotions, your actions, and your thoughts. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.